Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I just want to introduce the moment area method. So this is a good tool for us for finding the slope and deflection of statically determinate problems. Uh, it's possible to be used in statically indeterminate situations, but I would uh, probably opt to use a different method, like the three moment equation or something like that for those problems. Um, but for now, we're just going to talk about statically determinate problems and how we can use the moment area method. So basically, the moment area method is going to give us the relative angle between two points on a deflected structure. So if we have some arbitrarily loaded beam here that's going to give us a, a deflected structure, a profile here of the deflected structure, uh, and we identify points A and B here, what, if we draw the tangent on point A and the tangent on point B, then the angle that is formed between those is called uh, theta B with respect to A. And this can be given to us with the moment area method, which basically we have two theorems. So the first moment area theorem is theta B with respect to A is equal to this integral from A to B of uh, M over E I dx. So basically all that means is if we have this, uh, we have, if we have a structure, we'll be able to draw a shear force diagram for it, and we'll also be able to draw a bending moment diagram for it. Now, this is, the, this is the diagram of M, bending moment diagram, but if we basically just divide every single point on the bending moment diagram by EI, now we have an M over EI diagram. So whatever this value was, let's say it's 100 kilonewton meters or something, divide it by EI, your flexural rigidity, and divide every single point on that line, and basically it'll be the exact same shape as the bending moment diagram, but the values will be scaled down by whatever the flexural rigidity is. So when we want to find this relative slope between points A and B, all we do is find the area here and uh, of the M over EI diagram, and that's basically this integral. It's just saying that the relative angle or the change in angle between these two points is just equal to the area of the M over EI diagram or the integral of that expression from A to B. Now, if we're looking at a different section, maybe from the midpoint, to the right hand side, then A would be in the middle and B would be on the right hand side and then the area that we're considering would be shifted. So we're only talking about the area between the two points of interest, not necessarily the entire area of the M over EI diagram. So if you see like a, on a formula sheet or something you have this first moment area theorem and you forget what this integral is, basically it's just the slope of B relative to A is the area of the M over EI diagram between A and B and this value ends up being in units of radians if you've done it correctly. So that's the first half of the moment area method is the first moment area theorem. Now the second moment area theorem gives us the expression for this value here that's called the tangential deviation. So T B with respect to A or B relative to A is this value here. So we say T B relative to A. So the, the actual like vertical separation of these two tangent lines at point B is equal to this X bar, basically which is the centroid of our M over EI uh, area from A to B. And that is the distance basically to B here. So we call this X bar. And I'd like to put a subscript here, B, because really this works the other way. You could go uh, talking about x bar a, um, but basically when we're talking, when we're looking for information about point b, we're going to be taking this x bar between the centroid and point b. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff so we're not confused about that. And then this part of the equation is the same. It's just the area of the m over e di i diagram from a to b. So this expression with an integral can basically just be said, like you can just think of it as the position of B's tangent relative to A's tangent at point B is just equal to the distance from the centroid of the M over EI diagram to B times the area of the M over EI diagram from A to B. So more simply, we can really just write this as T B relative to A. So the tangential deviation is just equal to this, uh, the distance to the centroid times the area. Um, and then I guess too, just to keep things simple, because often like when you look at these integrals, it can just get a little bit overwhelming thinking about everything that's going on here, but it's really simple. We just find this distance in this area, multiply them together, and you're getting this value. Same thing here in the first moment area theorem where we had theta b relative to a. That's literally just the area of you know, this is the area of the moment, uh, the M over EI diagram. Now, 
there is a often in these types of problems um, this is a composite shape really because if you uh, assuming this is you know some accurate shape this is like the combination of a parabola and a rectangle and so often what's going to be happening is we'll be identifying the centroid of this shape and then the centroid of this shape and we'll be getting some expression that looks like x bar 1 times a1 plus x bar 2 times a2 but anyways in this example here where we're taking uh, when we're considering point a and point b the actual deflection of point a is unknown and the actual deflection of point b is unknown so if we find like this information about the, the distance between their tangents and even their, their the relative slope between these two points I don't actually know what this angle is, and I don't actually know what this angle is. So if I find the difference between them, that's not the most useful quantity. So what we're going to be doing basically with this method is it's really useful when we know the position and slope of certain points. Uh, like if we have a cantilever beam where we know that the slope there is zero right where it comes out, then that's going to be a useful piece of information. And when we take the relative slope off of a known slope of zero, then we're going to be able to find like the actual slope of other points. So I'm actually going to stop this video here and I'm uh, going to start up a fresh example in the next video where we're going to go over a cantilever beam with a single point load using the moment area method to find the slope and deflection at the end. So uh, I will see you guys in that video and we'll go through our first example with the moment area method.